Okay, and welcome to the immune system for 2402 lecture. Now, I have to warn you, this is a complicated chapter, and I have done my best to keep it simple, but you'll see. Anyway, um, over here on the right, we see just the basic breakdown of the immune system. You've got what are called innate defenses, which I'll go into first, and then adaptive defenses, which are much more complicated, which I'll go into uh, later. So you can break these down, the innate defenses, into two basic groups, surface and then inside. And refer back to that little figure whenever you want to group something. So here I am. Uh, one thing I've done here is I've tried to put the most important terms in this sort of gold font or orange or whatever it is. Now don't just go and learn only those words, but I'm just trying to make sure to point out that those are kind of important words. Uh, that will, you know, you'll need to know those if you're going to understand all this, the rest of this stuff. So they're called innate or non-specific defenses. Now, innate's a good word. Innate's something you're born with. And non-specific means that, in this case, uh, kind of generalized. It doesn't focus on one thing that's invaded you and try to defend against that. It's kind of, if it looks weird, if it's something from outside, uh, attack it. That's kind of what this non-specific means. Now, we'll start on the surface. And you can see this table here. It's got a lot of stuff that's exposed to this to the air. Now you might say, well, gastric juice, what's up with that? How is that a surface defense? It's in my stomach. But your little inside of your lungs, the inside of your gut, are all connected directly to the uh, atmosphere outside, right? When you swallow food, you're swallowing stuff that's outside and a little pocket of stuff goes into your belly. So you've got to have these defenses and they all count as kind of outside. You've got your skin's pretty acidic and it's tough and there's a lot of mucus and the hairs catch stuff and there's, uh, you know, acid in your stomach and your urine cleans out your urinary system. Now, moving to internal defenses, and, and by the way, uh, you know, I'm briefly, briefly going over this, but this table's here for a reason. Uh, internal defenses. So once you get inside, you penetrate the skin, you get in through the uh, mucous membranes, whatever, you get inside the body. And now you have your internal defenses. So some things we've already well aware of, phagocytes, you know, your, your white blood cells that are going to uh, eat, eat stuff. And uh, what are called, here's a new one, natural killer cells or NK cells. These guys are kind of like, uh, they kill your own cells, which is dangerous power to have. But they kill your own cells if they show some kind of malfunction, right? So if they're virus infected, they're going to display some odd physiology, and same thing with cancer. What they do is they induce something called apoptosis, which means programmed cell death. The, the cell kills itself. It turns on a little switch, and the cell destroys itself. And we'll meet some guys called cytotoxic T cells later, which are similar in function, although part of the adaptive specific immune system. Inflammation is a great general defense. Uh, anytime you've gotten a cut or a scratch or a mosquito bite or a bee sting or whatever, tw twisted ankle, you're going to experience inflammation and you can recognize all these symptoms here. Uh, what that does is it, let's just go with a, a scratch, a cut or something on your skin. So it'll kind of get red and inflamed and you might want to put some antibiotic on there to help your body out, but you're going to have some pain there and you're going to have uh, some swelling and what that does is it allows lots of uh, you know, plasma with the blood cells that are going to defend you to go there. It also, it, because of its pain, it tells you don't use it, right? So it's protective. Uh, there are some chemicals that are released. Uh, I'm not going to have you learn the each of these, okay? We'll cover several of them later. But just know that they're basically uh, chemicals designed to either vasodilate uh, or uh, cause pain, right? Uh, encourage themselves to encourage yourselves to make more of them more inflammation uh, vasodilation is simply blood vessels getting bigger in diameter when they get bigger in diameter they get spaces between the cells and stuff can leak out right so lots of white blood cells antibody uh, clotting factors all this stuff are released from the blood vessels at the site of the injury a big process here that's important is what's called phagocyte mobilization and I've broken it down into four steps. Uh, you know the words mean something so again try to try to study these words leukocytosis right 
white blood cell manufacture, you're going to really increase the number of neutrophils. You've already got a lot, but as soon as you get a cut or uh, infection, uh, you're going to multiply them rapidly. They die off pretty quick, but you can manufacture them really quick also. Margination is going to the margins, so neutrophils kind of stick to the walls of the capillaries, and then diapodesis is when they move out of the capillaries. They kind of squeeze out and get out into the tissue where they move via something called positive chemotaxis. So it's not chemotaxis, it's not taxi that your chemical gets in. Taxis is a type of movement. Chemotaxis is movement with regard to a chemical. Positive chemotaxis is moving towards a chemical. So bacteria that are in the injury, your own cells will release chemicals and you, these white blood cells are gonna move towards there. You have a group of antimicrobial proteins, which we'll see in the next section later on, uh, which include two really important components, one called interferons, which uh, protect the cells nearby. If you, let's say cell A gets injured, cell A re releases interferons and the cells nearby go, okay, there's a virus, we gotta hunker down, right? And complement, which is a big class of proteins, which do a lot of things. They do a lot of jobs, but lysing and amplifying response are two key components of that. And then you get fever. Everybody's had a system-wide fever when you've gotten sick with a virus or you've gotten sick with a bacteria or whatever. Uh, you've had localized fevers when you've gotten an injury. If you've ever twisted an ankle, you'll know that, you'll know that in the next few days the uh, ankle is swollen and hot. And this is caused by chemicals called pyrogens which are, again, released by cells that are fighting the infection. When you raise your body temperature, it uh, does a couple of things. It cuts back on the microbes ability to reproduce, increases your metabolic rate, which is good. That ups your whole, you know, uh, reaction. And it also hoards uh, some critical uh, nutrients that microbes need. On top of that, you're basically, uh, this is why fevers are good for you, actually, up to a certain point. You, you're raising your body temperature to a level that you can handle, but you hope that the microbes can't. So it's kind of like playing a game of chicken. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Don't play it, but just uh, know what it is. Uh, so you're basically hoping that the, that the microbes swerve off the road and crash over the cliff before you do. And most of the time it works, right? But if you get like a serious fever, if it's up like 103 or 104, that's when you're going to need to start taking care of that because that can actually hurt you. The last uh, slide for this first screencast, I'm trying to get to respond. There it is. And this is kind of a nice summary here. Tells you some of the things they do. Uh, this is useful. If I were you, I'd write, you know, if I give you a table and say this is important, uh, transcribe this stuff. Don't just have it and read it. Reading it isn't as helpful as if you reword it and put it on a flashcard or write, you know, what they do and connect it to other things. Have somebody quiz you. All right, that's it for the first video.